Good morning everyone. Welcome back to analysis of indeterminate structures. In today's session, let us consider one more problem on trusses. Just like previous problem, by using simple steps, we can analyze this particular truss. So here, you all know, in step number one, we are going to find out the degree of static indeterminacy. And to find the degree of static indeterminacy in case of trusses, we know the formula is given by Km plus R minus Nj and the values of K is 1 and N is 2. And if you count the number of members here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we have 5 members and reactions. At A and B we have roller supports and at C we have injured support. Therefore, if you count the number of reactions, 1, 2, 3 and 4 minus N, you all know it is 2 in case of plane trusses and joints. We have 1, 2, 3 and 4 number of joints. So if you solve this particular equation, 5 plus 4, 9, 9 minus 8 is 1. Therefore, the degree of static indeterminacy is 1. So after getting this degree of static indeterminacy, based on this number, we can assume the redundant force. So in previous problem itself, I have told you, if they have not mentioned anything about redundant force in the problem, you have all the choice of assuming any member or any reaction as redundant force. So in previous problem, we have assumed two diagonal members as redundant forces. So here, you can take AD as redundant, BD as redundant or AC, any member as redundant or you can assume any reaction as redundant. They have not mentioned anything in particular in the problem about the redundant force. If they have mentioned, you have to take that particular member as redundant. For example, if they have mentioned, assume AB as redundant force, you have no choice, you have to take AB as redundant force. Here, I am going to assume reaction at B as redundant. But this is not mentioned in the problem. In problem, they have just mentioned to find the reaction at B. That's all. So let us assume the redundant as reaction at B. Therefore, the redundant force will be this you can call it as RB. So here, if you mark the reactions, so I call this as reaction at A, R, A and this is reaction at B, R, B and this is reaction at C, R, C and since it, this is an injured support, we have one more reaction in the horizontal manner called that as H, C. Assume all the unknown reactions in the positive sense and you can call this as figure A given truss. Since we have only one degree of indeterminacy, we have only one redundant force here. So now in step 2, we are going to find the member forces because of the applied loading along with the reactions. But we don't consider this redundant force, Rb. So in step number 2, again consider the same truss. along with the applied loading we have one horizontal loading at point D and at A we have RA since B RB is the redundant don't consider that force at B and we have RC and this is HC this is point B A this is C and this is D all other details remains as it is the distance we have horizontal distance as 3 meters and vertical distance as 4 meters. You can call this particular diagram as figure B and here we are going to mark the member forces because of the applied loading and we have given the notation like PS. Let us find all the member forces in this particular truss by using method of joints. This will be our step number 2. 
So while solving this particular truss using method of joints, you know the basics like we need to consider such a joint where number of member forces that is unknown member forces should be 2 or less than 2 and the unknown forces should be assumed in the positive sense that is if you consider this as a joint if they are moving away from the joint they are treated as positive and we mention them as tensile force and if the forces are moving towards the joint such forces are called as compressive force and we mention them in negative manner. These are the two basic points you should remember while analyzing any truss by using method of joints. Now, so if you see the joints, I have A, B, C and D. If you look at A, there are three members meeting at A joint. One is RA, AB and AD. So I don't know these three forces. And if you take C, again it is HC, RC, CD and CB. There are four forces meeting. And at B, BA, BC, BD, three forces are meeting at this particular joint. If you take D, there are four forces. So I can't analyze any joint here. Clear? So therefore, I need to find the reactions first. In some problem, we can find the member forces without finding the reactions also. Here in this particular problem, if you observe all the joints, so at all the joints, number of unknown members are more than 2. Clear? So first we need to find the reactions here. So to find the reactions, so as usual, apply equilibrium condition. First I take moment about joint C, clockwise moments as positive. So if you take the clockwise moment as positive, it is Ra into 6 then the 60, 60 into 4 and this is acting in anti-clockwise direction therefore minus 60 into 4. So these are the only forces which creates moment about C. So this equals to 0 therefore Ra equals to 16 to 4. If you send this to this side it will become plus 16 to 4 divided by 6. This gives me plus 40 kilonewton. The reaction at A is 40 kilonewton. And now we have two more equilibrium conditions summation of fx equals to 0, right side forces as positive. I have hc acting in right side direction therefore positive, 60 to the left therefore negative, these are the only horizontal forces here, therefore the value of hc equals to plus 60. So if you are getting the positive values, the assumed directions are correct. So now the last equilibrium condition, summation of fy equals to 0, upward forces as positive. I have RA acting in upward direction, RC acting in upward direction and I don't have any vertical loading here therefore this will be equals to 0 therefore RA equals to minus of RC therefore the value of RC will be RA is 40 this will be minus 40 kilonewton. So after getting the reactions just transfer the values here. RA is plus 40 and, and HC is plus 60 and since RC is minus you just change the direction. I have assumed in upward direction since I have got the negative value you just change the direction here and mark the value as plus 40. If you change the direction, you need not to consider the negative sign here. Now you can consider the particular joint where you have the unknown forces will be 2 or less than 2. If you see A, I know RA, these two are the unknown member forces. If you take C, I know HC and RC, these two are the unknown member forces. So either you can consider A joint or C joint, but initially you can't consider D or B. So let us consider joint A. If you consider joint A, let us write the free body diagram of joint A. So this is Ra of value 40 kilonewton and this is FAB. I don't know the member force in AB, therefore assume this in positive sense away from the joint. 
and this is FAD again away from the joint and AD is the inclined member therefore here you need to resolve the member force into horizontal and vertical component. You all know horizontal component is always accompanied by cos theta and vertical by sin theta and here we need to find the value of theta. So if you observe the truss diagram see this is the theta required here therefore tan theta is opposite by adjacent tan theta equals to 4 by 3 therefore theta equals to tan inverse of 4 by 3 if you solve this particular value you are going to get the value of theta as 53.13 degrees now wherever required the value of theta i am going to use 53.13 as usual apply the equilibrium condition summation of fx equals to 0 right side forces as positive I have fab plus fad cos theta and theta you all know it is 53.13 equals to 0 I don't know fab and fad let us apply one more equilibrium condition summation of fy equals to 0 upward forces as positive I have 40 plus fad sin theta sin 53.13 equals to 0. If you solve this particular equation, you are going to get the value of FAD as minus. It is minus 50 kilo Newton. Since we got a negative value, call this as compressive force. Now substitute this value here. Therefore, the value of FAB will be FAD is minus 50. Substitute here. It is minus 50 cos 53.13 if you send to this side it will become plus therefore FAB will be plus 30 kilo Newton since it is positive value call this as tensile force like this you can analyze remaining joints to get the member forces for this particular truss so now after analyzing each joint immediately you need to mark these values i've got fab and fad so just mark this value on the truss the value of fad is minus 50 kilonewton since it is minus towards the joint and fab is plus 30 therefore away from the joint 30 plus 30 kilo newton now you can consider other joint like joint b or joint c so i'll take joint b now consider joint b so it is very simple let us just write the free body diagram of joint b at b we have three members look here one two and three i know this value this is 30 And here FBC since I don't know this force just assume away from the joint and this is FBD so if you apply the equilibrium condition summation of FX equals to 0 right side force as positive I have plus FBC minus 30 equals to 0 therefore FBC equals to plus 30 kN since it is positive you can consider this as tensile force and one more FBD summation of FY equals to zero upward forces as positive FBD is acting in upward direction and we don't find any other vertical load here therefore FBD equals to zero so just transfer these values here so 30 is positive therefore moving away from the joint and BD is 0. We got all the member forces in this particular truss except this CD. So either you can consider joint D or joint C to find the member force in CD. So let us consider joint C. Write the free body diagram again. So this is HC and the value of HC is 60 and this is rc and this is 40 don't write the negative sign here because of that negative sign only i have changed the direction to the downward side 
and here this is 30 look at the arrow mark from C it is going away therefore I should write like this and one more member at C is C D F C D moving away from the joint I don't know the value that's why I've assumed in positive sense these are the result components vertical will be sine and horizontal will be cos and this is the theta again if you observe the value of theta this is the theta required there opposite by adjacent theta equals to tan inverse of opposite by adjacent again 4 by 3 therefore I am going to get 53.13 as a theta value here also as usual either you apply summation of fx equals to 0 or summation of fy equals to 0 since I required only one force here you have to apply any one of the equilibrium conditions here so if you apply this one I have plus 60 minus 30 then minus fcd cos theta and the value of theta is 53.13 if you solve this particular equation you are going to get the value of fcd as it is plus 50 kilo newton since it is positive call it as tensile force and immediately mark that particular force on the truss tensile forces moving away from the joint so this completes step number two if you recall the steps in step number one we find dsi based on that we are going to assume the redundant force and while computing the member forces in this particular truss we need to remove this redundant force that means at since we have assumed reaction at b as redundant we need to remove that redundant force and to analyze this particular truss by using method of joints if required find the reactions then proceed by considering individual joints to get the member forces and here you have to remember these notations if any forces moving away from the joint those forces can be considered as tensile forces and if they are moving towards the joint they can be considered as compressive forces tensile forces are positive and compressive forces are negative now in step 3 let us consider this truss diagram again but without any external loadings that means here we are going to compute the member forces without applying the external loads but we need to apply the unit load at the place of redundant force you all know we have assumed reaction at B that is RB as redundant therefore here RB equals to 1 kilo Newton and this is RA this is RC and this is HC at D we have 60 kilo Newton but we should remove this 60 in this particular step because 60 is the externally applied load as usual all other details distance will be same it is 3 meters 3 meters and this is 4 meters you can call this particular diagram as figure C and whatever the member forces we are going to get now will be denoted as K clear so as usual here also we are going to apply the method of joints to find the member forces and yes I require the values of reactions here also so find the reactions here first by using equilibrium conditions as usual I take moment about C as 0 with clockwise moment as positive if you take moment about this particular point look RA into 6 positive then plus RB into 3 this is also positive because both these reactions creates clockwise moments equals to 0 I know the value of RB at RB I have applied unit load therefore the value of RB is 1 if you solve this particular equation you are going to get the value of RAS minus 3 into 1 divided by 6 it is minus 0.5 kilo Newton clear and if you apply summation of Fy equals to 0 upward forces as positive I have RA acting in upward direction plus RB plus RC 
equals to 0. So I know value of Ra is minus 0.5 and Rb is plus 1, Rc I should find. If you solve this particular equation, 1 minus 0.5 is plus 0.5 you send to this side, it will become minus 0.5 kilo Newton. These are the values of reactions, vertical reactions at A and C. And HC, to find HC, if you apply this particular condition, summation of Fx equals to 0, right side forces as positive, HC is acting in right side direction, therefore take that force as positive. And if you look at the truss diagram, we don't have any other horizontal forces here, therefore HC equals to 0. Immediately mark all these values here. RA is minus 0.5 and RC is minus 0.5, therefore change the direction here. Initially, I have assumed this RA and RC in positive sense, since I have got the negative values, just change the directions here. So, change direction to the downward side and the value is 0.5 kilo Newton. Here also it is 0.5 kilo Newton and the value of HC is 0. Now, as usual, just like in previous step, Consider any joint here, I will take joint A, write the free body diagram of joint A, it is 0.5 kilo Newton, this is F A B and this is F A D. So if you get any inclined force, just resolve them into vertical and horizontal component. And this is theta. So this is the theta required. As usual, if you observe, to find theta, theta equals to tan inverse of 4 by 3, that gives me the value 53.13 degrees. So if you use summation of Fx equals to 0, right side force as positive, I have Fab to the right side and this result component plus FAD cos 53.13, theta is 53.13. So these are the two horizontal forces here and I don't know these two forces. So use one more equilibrium condition summation of Fy equals to 0, upward force as positive. So I have 0.5 acting in downside, therefore minus 0.5 and this vertical component is acting in upward direction, this is FAD sin theta. Again theta is 53.13. If you solve this particular equation, the value of FAD is, if you send this 0.5 to the minus 0.5 to this side, it will be plus 0.5. The plus 0.5 divided by sine theta. Therefore, the value of FAD is 0.63 kilo Newton. Since it is positive, call it as tensile force. Substitute the value of AD here and solve this particular equation, you are going to get the value of FAB as minus 0.38 kN. If you got negative value, call that as compressive force. Immediately mark these values on the truss. AB is negative minus 0.38, therefore towards the joint, 0.38, all the forces are in kN and AD is positive away from the joint 0.63 kilo Newton. So again you can take joint B, if you take joint B this will be, at B we have four forces, among four forces I know two forces already, RB is one and this is 0.38 kilo Newton and I don't know this FBC and FBD. So assume them in positive sense away from the joint. So this is B. So if you apply the equilibrium condition summation of Fx equals to 0 right side force as positive. FBC I have one horizontal force here acting to the right side therefore plus FBC and plus 0.38, another horizontal force, 
this should be equals to 0. If you solve this particular equation, you are going to get the value of FBC as minus 0.38 kN. So, this is minus, call this as compressive force. Next, if you apply one more equilibrium condition, summation of Fy equals to 0 upward forces as positive, I have 1 plus FBD equals to 0. Both are acting in upward direction, therefore positive. Therefore, FBD equals to minus 1 kilo Newton. Call it as compressive force. Immediately mark all these values on the truss. FBC minus 0.38 towards the joint. And FBD, again, this is also negative, towards the joint. Now, I require only one member force that is CD. So, you can consider joint D or joint C here. You consider joint C. Write the free body diagram of that particular joint. RC it is 0.5 and HC this is 0. And here I have 0.38 kilonewton. And this is the inclined force F, C, D. So just resolve them into horizontal and vertical component. So as usual, here this is the theta I required. Again, if you look here, theta equals to tan inverse of 4 by 3. I get the same value, 53.13. Summation of Fx equals to 0, right side force as positive. Since I require only one force, apply either Fx or Fi equilibrium condition here. So it is 0.38 acting toward right side, therefore positive. Then this is, this horizontal force is acting to the left side, therefore minus Fcd. Since I have considering horizontal equilibrium force, it is minus Fcd cos theta equals to 0. If you solve this particular equation, the value of Fcd will be equals to plus 0.63 kilo Newton. Since it is positive, call it as tensile force. And we can mark that particular value on the truss away from the joint. Clear? So this completes step number 3. We got all the members in this particular truss because of the applied loading and all the member forces because of the unit load applied at particular redundant force assumed. Now in step 4, we use the flexibility matrix equation to find the unknown redundant force. Flexibility matrix equation is given by D minus DL equals to F into P can call this as equation number 1. You all know here matrix D will be equals to 0 because we don't have any sinking supports here. We left with minus DL equals to F into P. Call this as equation 2. And this DL is given by summation of PS into K into L divided by AE and this F is given by summation of K square L divided by A. To find these values, we need a standard table which is comprising of all these forces because of the applied load and unit load that is PS K. And in this particular problem, if you observe, A E is not constant, that is product of this A E is not constant. In previous problem, this A is kept as constant. So here, for all the members, they have given different area. For members A, B and B, C, they have given 300 mm square. For A, D and C, D, they have given 500 mm square. And for B, D, they have given 400 mm square. So let us prepare a standard table which comprises of all these values. So I need the details of members here. Then, PS, which is in kilonewton, you all know PS is a member force because of the applied loading. Then K, that is also kept in kilonewton. Then length in meters. Here I am going to add one more column about AE. Since I have given different area for members, 
you should add this column then product of ps k l divided by a e and k square l divided by a e so now let us write the members here it is a b then we have b c then b d a d and a c so in step number 2 and 3 we have got the values of this ps and k just fill those values here you can use figure b for the, these particular values and figure c to fill up the details regarding k just refer step 2 and 3 to fill these details clear now the length for ab ab bc is 3 meters and bd is 4 and these inclined members you know this is a pythagoras this is one of the pythagoras triplets is 3 4 therefore this side should be 5 meters this inclined length should be 5 meters if you want you can apply the pythagoras theorem and you can find this inclined length it is 5 meters in previous problem we have not considered this ae because a is given as constant for all the members here they have changed the value of area for all the members so just find the values of a for all the members here so i just consider first member here ab for ab the value of area see i'll just write it as a this is member ab for the member ab a is given by area of for member ab is given as 300 mm square just convert this area to meter square therefore it is 300 into 10 power minus 6 then e is given as 200 gpa therefore 200 g is giga pascal is newton per meter square just convert newton to kilo newton so it is 10 power minus 3 if you solve this so you get 6 into 10 power 4 kilo newton even the unit of a is kilo newton like this you can fill in the details of a e for all the members by taking the respective areas for ab they have given 300 therefore i have taken 300 for bc also it is 300 therefore for bc also you get the same a e value that is 6 into 10 power 4 and for bd ad and ac If you put the respective values of area, you are going to get the values of A. For BD, it is 8 into 10 power 4. For AD and AC, it is 10 into 10 power 4. Clear? So now, as usual, if you multiply the values of P, S, K, and L, then divide by the respective A. You can easily fill this particular column. And in this particular column you need to take the square of k multiplied by the length divided by a so here i'm just going to show you how to calculate this ps k l divided by a for one member so for member ab it is p is 30 and k is minus 0.38 and length is 3 meters divided by the value of a is 6 into 10 power 4 if you solve this particular equation you are going to get the value of the ps kl divided by ae as minus 1 into 10 power minus 3 so like this you can calculate the remaining values here so if you calculate you get minus 1 into 10 power minus 3 for bc also for bd it is 0 then for ad it is minus 2 into 10 power minus 3 again this is plus 2 into 10 power minus 3 in the same manner you can calculate this k square l divided by ae so for first member that is ab it is 7.22 into 10 power minus 6 this is again 7.22 into 10 power minus 6 it's 15 into 10 power minus 6 19.85 into 10 power minus 
this is also 19.85 into 10 power minus 6. So I need the summation of this column that is P S K L divided by A E and also this one K square L divided by A E. So summation of this will be minus 2 into 10 power minus 3 and this one F is 104.14 into 10 power minus 6. So now you can use these particular values in equation 2 to get this unknown member force that is P. This is a redundant force. So if you substitute here and solve, so it is minus into minus, this will become plus 2 into 10 power minus 3. Then Fs 104.14 into 10 power minus 6. Then P. If you solve this, the value of P will be this is RB. We have assumed the redundant force as reaction at B. Therefore, the value of RB will be it is 19.2 kilo Newton. So, this completes step number 4. So, now in step 5, we need to find the final member forces in the truss given by using this redundant force. Again for that I need to prepare one standard table. So now in step number 5 we need to find the final member forces in the truss. For that we should make use of this particular equation that is Pf equals to Ps plus Kp. So this is the member forces because of the applied load and K is because of unit load and P is the redundant forces and you know Pf is final member force. And again I need this standard table here with all these details that is members, PS, K, then P, this is a redundant force, this is also in kilonewton, PF is the final member force, this is also represented in kilonewton and along with all these details I should mention the nature of force, whether the force is compressive or tensile. Again I need this standard table along with these details to find the final member force in the truss given. So you know this PS and K can be filled by using the details we have found in step number 2 and in step number 3. For that you can refer figure B and figure C again. And this P is the redundant force and that is common for all the members that is 19.2 kilo Newton. And this PF by using this particular equation, I will just show you for one member. If you want to find the PF in member AB, so this PF can be given by the value of PS is 30 plus K is minus 0.38 and P is 19.2. If you solve this particular equation, you are going to get the value of PF in AB as 22.704 kilo Newton. Since it is positive, you can mark it as tensile force. Like this, you can compute all the final forces in the remaining members. If you compute all the forces here, you are going to get the force in BC as 22.704 minus 19.20 minus 37.904 then 62.096. So if you get the positive value, the nature of force will be tensile and if it is negative, the nature of force is compressive. After marking this nature of force, now we can mark the final member forces in the truss. So this is a truss given. You can call this as figure D, final member forces. That is PF. So AB, it is tensile away from the joint and BC again it is tensile away from the joint BD it is compressive towards the joint AD again it is compressive towards the joint and AC it is tensile away from the joint just write the values here all the values are in kilo Newton BD is 19.2 and AD is 37.904 
and CD is sorry this is CD and CD is 62.096 clear and the reactions RB is plus 92.2 kilo Newton and RA is plus 40 RC is minus 40 and HC is 60 so like this you should mark the final forces in the truss given so this completes the analysis of this particular problem by assuming one of the reactions as redundant force let us consider one more problem on trusses here also we are going to follow the simple five steps as usual in step number one we should find the degree of static indeterminacy if you observe the given truss you can call this as figure A here if you observe all the members are meeting at a single point called A in this case we can find the degree of static indeterminacy by using the formula number of members minus 2 this formula is applicable only when we have the truss members meeting at one single point just like in this particular problem so here if you count the number of members we have 1 2 and 3 minus 2 again here also we are going to get the degree of static indeterminacy as 1 so based on this number you can assume the redundance here we have got degree of static indeterminacy as 1 therefore assume any of the members here it may be a b a c or a d as redundant force so i am going to take force in member a d as redundant force call it as FAD so this completes step number one finding the degree of static indeterminacy and based on this number assuming the redundant force now in step two we are going to find the member forces because of the externally applied loading so here we have two point loads one is 20 and another one is 10 since FAD is taken as redundant you need not to consider this particular member the force in this particular member is 0 this is A, B, C and D B, C and C, D are not the members at this particular side we have fixed end it is fixed clear we have only three members a b a c and a d now here they have given angles 60 degree and 45 degree this is not required because this portion this member i have removed and length of the member a c is given as 4 meters right then required information and call this as figure B here I am going to get the member forces because of the applied load and that is denoted by PS as usual by using the concepts of method of joints we are going to analyze this particular truss so now we can consider joint A here So if you consider joint A, so here, just write the free body diagram of joint A. So 10 kilo Newton is acting to the right side, 20 kilo Newton to the down side. Then FAC and FAB. We don't know the forces in these two members, therefore we should assume the forces in member AC and AB in the positive sense that is away from the joint 
since I've got the inclined member here, just resolve that inclined force into a horizontal and vertical component. Mark angle theta with respect to horizontal force. So here, see look here, I put a dotted line. This is the theta I have marked there. So I have, they have given this angle as 60 degree. You can see this, this is 60 degree. Therefore, this angle is also 60 degrees. So here, the value of theta is taken as 60 degrees. Either they give information in terms of length or in terms of angle. This is very simple problem. I've just taken this problem because here all the members are meeting at one single point. So now if I apply the equilibrium conditions, summation of fx equals to 0, right side forces as positive, I have 10, then minus fab cos theta, theta is 60 degrees equals to 0. If you solve this, if a b equals to plus 10 divided by cos 60 and you get the value as 20 kilo newton. This is tensile. And if you apply summation of f y equals to 0 upward forces as positive, I have minus 20 because it is acting in downward direction plus F A B sin theta and theta is 60 then plus F A C equals to 0. You know the value of F A B substitute here F A B is 20 and solve this particular equation going to get the value of F A C as 2.68 kilo Newton and this is also in positive since therefore mark it as tensile. Now immediately after analyzing a single joint just transfer the values whatever you have got onto this particular structure. So AB is plus 20 away from the joint plus 20 kilo Newton. AC is also plus 2.68 away from the joint. Look here we have only three members. A, B, A, C and C, D. Among three members, A, D is a redundant. Therefore, we left with only two members. Here, by analyzing a single joint A, so I have got the forces A, C and A, B. Here, you don't have other option to select any other joints because we have only one joint A. B, C, D are not joints here. Clear? So, now, I have got the values of PS. This completes step number 2. Now in step number 3, we should apply the unit load along the member AD because AD is taken as redundant. And we should not apply the external loads here. While applying unit load, you should apply only the unit load. Be careful. Don't do such mistakes. Here, take 1 kilo Newton, which is acting away from the joint. This is A. Again, here, we need to find the member forces in A, B and AC. So call this particular diagram as figure C and this gives us the value for K. So now as usual consider we have only one joint here joint A write the free body diagram of joint A at A we have three member forces this is FAC and this is 1 kilo Newton that is FAD is taken as 1 unit load and this is FAB clear so here I have two inclined members just resolve them so this is the theta this will become 1 cos theta this is 1 sin t 
theta and here it will become f a b cos theta and this is f a b sin theta this is theta this is joint a and here we get different values of theta you observe this theta we have here so here for ab side theta is taken as 60 degree for ad side theta is taken as since this is 45 this is also 45 therefore i call this as theta 1 and this as theta 2 so this is theta 1 and this is theta 2 just write here theta 1 is 60 degree and theta 2 is 45 degrees as usual apply the equilibrium condition summation of fx equals to 0 right side forces as positive so if you apply this condition so count the right side force it is 1 cos theta 2 this or theta 2 so theta 2 is 45 then this one minus fab cos theta 1 theta 1 is 60 degrees equals to 0 solve this particular equation you get the value of fab as 1.41 kilo newton and this is positive now apply one more equilibrium condition summation of fy equals to zero upward forces as positive we have fac acting in upward direction then this one plus one sin theta 2 theta 2 is 45 then plus fab sin theta 1 theta 1 is 60 degree be careful while substituting the respective values of theta don't exchange the values of theta here clear here it is 45 and here it is 60 equals to 0 if you solve this particular equation you are going to get the value of fac as see fab value have already got as 1.41 substitute here and solve this particular equation we get the value of fac as minus 1.93 kilo newton since it is minus call it as compressive force immediately just transfer this force onto the structure ab it is positive therefore away from the joint 1.41 kilo newton and ac it is negative therefore towards the joint it is 1.93 kilo newton so like this we can get the forces required in the truss given because of the externally applied load and also because of the unit load we require these two diagrams that is figure b and figure c to prepare the standard table for further calculations so now in step four with the help of flexibility matrix equation that is d minus dl equals to f into p you can call this as equation number one and here you all know d is equals to zero don't have any sinking of supports here therefore equation one reduces to minus dl equals to f into p and here the value of dl can be computed with the help of this particular equation that is summation of p s k l divided by a e and f can be computed by using the equation summation of k square l divided by a e so let us find these values that is dl and f that is summation of ps into k into l divided by a e and summation of k square l divided by a e with the help of this standard table so in this particular table we need to write the information regarding member ps which is in kilo newton k l in meters then a e since a e is constant if you want you can add here or else you just neglect this then the product ps k into l then k square into l here we have three members 
member AB, member AC, then member AD. Just by referring figure B and figure C, fill the details of PS and K. Now, just write down the length of respective members. AC is given as 4 meters. But they have not given the length of this AB and AD. You can easily find out them. So they have given the angles as 60 and 45 degree. So if you use sine component here for AB. So I have triangle like this. This is 60 degree. You all know this is opposite. This is hypotenuse and this is adjacent side. This is B, C, this is A. Clear? This is adjacent side. So I want this length. Therefore, if you apply the sine theta, sine theta equals to opposite by hypotenuse, I want this. Therefore, h equals to opposite divided by sine theta. Theta is given 60 degree. And this side is also given. Opposite side length is 4 meters. Therefore, this is 4 divided by sine 60. We are going to get the value of AB as length of AB as. 4.62 meters. In the same manner, if you consider the right hand side of triangle that is CDA, the angle 45 degrees, again same opposite hypotenuse and this is adjacent. So I want hypotenuse side that is AD, length of member AD, it will become opposite by sine theta. Now theta is 45 degrees. This length is 4 meters. Therefore, it is 4 divided by sine 45. If you solve this particular equation, we are going to get the length of AD as. Five point six six meters. Just substitute here. AB is 4.622 and this is 5.66. Now, just do the product of this. PS into K into L, that is 20 into 1.41 into 4.62, you get 130.284 and, and here for the member AC, minus 20.69 and this is 0. For K square into L, I will get 9.16 for member AB, 14.9 for member AC and 5.66 for member AD. Now you just do the summation here. Summation of this PSK into L is 109.59 and this one is 29.72. So now I got the summation of these two columns. Just substitute the values here. Summation of PSK into L is 109.59 divided by AE. And this is 29.72 divided by AE. Just substitute the respective values in equation 2. We are going to get this is 109.59 divided by AE. So equals to F is 29.72 divided by AE and this is P. So AE, AE gets cancelled because A is given as constant. If you solve, you are going to get the value of P as minus 3.69. It is minus 3.69. It's compressive force. And we have marked the force in the member AD as rendered. Therefore, minus 3.69 is equals to FAD. This completes step number 4. Now, in our last step, that is in step number 5, we need to find the final member forces. Now, in step number 5, we use the equation PF equals to PS plus KP. 
Here you all know P is the member force because of the externally applied load and K is the member force because of the unit load and P is the redundant force. The value of P is minus 3.69 here. By using this particular equation, we can find the final member forces in all these members. Clear? Again, we need to prepare the standard table. In this table, the information about P, S and K will remain as it is. And this P, we just now got the value of P as 3.69. And this will be common for all the members. If you substitute the respective values here for member A, B, the P of will be P, S is 20 and the value of K is 1.41 and the value of P is minus 3.69. Like this, if you use this particular equation, you can get the value of PF in member AB as 14.8 kN. So like this, you can use this particular equation to find the final forces in these two members also. Just substitute here, here it will be 14.8 kN and in AC we have 9.8 and in AD it is 3 point, minus 3.69. Just write the nature of force, if it is positive mark it as tensile, if it is negative mark it as compressive. Finally, we should transfer all these forces onto the truss given. So this is the truss they have given. It is 10 kN, 20. This is joint A, this is B, C and D. Just mark the values. In AB it is tensile force away from the joints. In AC again it is a tensile force away from the joints. In AD, it is compressive towards the joint. Just write the values. All the values are in kilonewton. This is 14.8 kilonewton. This is 9.8 kilonewton. This is 3.69 kilonewton. You can call this particular diagram as figure D, which shows the final member forces. P, F. With this particular step, we can complete the problem. So if you recall the steps, in step number 1, we find degree of static indeterminacy. In step number 2, we find the member forces in the truss by considering externally applied loads. But we should remove the redundant force or redundant reaction assumed. And in step number 3, again, we are going to find the member forces but by considering only the unit load. Here we should remove all the externally applied loads. And both in step number 2 and in step number 3, we use method of joints to analyze the truss. That means we, to find the member forces in the truss, we use method of joints. And in step number 4, to find the unknown value P, that is redundant force, we make use of flexibility matrix equation along with the standard table. And in step number 5, finally we are going to find the final member forces in the given truss by using the formula Pf equals to Ps plus Kp. And again, we require one more standard table here and we plot the table like this. Finally, we are going to transfer the values whatever we have got on the truss given. Thank you.